Hey guys. Well, it's been a really busy day. Spraying fungicide, which is usually a sign you've, it's almost always a sign you've got a good looking crop. Fungicide, you're not actually spraying what you can see. Fungicide is pretty much 100% preventative. If you've already got disease in your crop, you're already losing bushels. And a lot of times, by the time you see the disease, it's too late to do anything about it. Sounds like Dad might be coming back. So, probably a sign we're going to shut down for the night. But, you see what we got going on here. We got a bunch of Prosaro. Prosaro XDR, I quite like it need a whole ton of it like each one of these does 320 acres we've got about just under 2,000 just over 2,000 acres of wheat I think but I've got just under I got like the 1920 acres worth here two modes of action it, it's only a group three but it protects the heads from fusarium and it also protects the flag leaf. So you wanna, you wanna time it. I'll actually, we'll go out to the crop here, take a, a good look. But what they call kind of day plus one, plus two. We did some crop scouting yesterday and it was pretty obvious that we needed to spray down here today. Not, well, we have the last field can wait till tomorrow dad has actually just got into the last field so he's sprayed so this morning starts here's 130 there's 130 so that's 260 uh, 155 over there so that's what 410 and he, he'll be doing this we have another 540 out there so what's that 950 ish we had to move that black tank from the farm. This is down at my uncle's now. All this we've got, and you, you might go, oh, Devin, well, why do you have it all bunched up there instead of where it could be nice and up at the front like you did with everything else? Well, it's because I got to put that tank back on there. You can see the two pallets and the one on the ground. When I'm done, I'm going to drain all the water out. I'm going to try and pump it all out. We're gonna lift that up, that corner up with the uh, tractor, slip the pallet in, get it under it with the, or get my forks in that, and then I belly wrap it with that big sling back to the carriage. And if that's right empty, I got no problem moving it on there. I put those two down just so everything's at the same height. Strap her down on three corners. Head back up north tomorrow. So we should probably mid-morning, no, it'd be later than that, probably by noon or one o'clock, I would expect I'll be hauling this up north, or dad, who knows. But that can all go out the window if we get rain tonight. They're calling for it. Some. I don't know. You look at one radar and they're saying, yeah, or sorry, forecast. They're saying, yeah, you look at another, they're saying, no, I wouldn't mind being shut down for a day or two because we got an inch of rain. That would be a good problem. An inch of rain is probably all that we really need. Maybe two tops would give us screaming good crops. But as it stands right now, that's kind of our situation. So let's go show you my what we're spraying right now all down all the wheat down south here is uh, hard red spring wheat or they call it Canada West hard red or uh, HSRW is what we it always kind of gets lumped in as but let's take a look at it now this is this wheat has actually started elongating over the day it's kind of 
this would have been really cool to have a time lapse of and i didn't even think of it having said that the gopro battery probably couldn't have taken it i would have had to string out a, an extension cord some nice looking wheat if you look at the flag leaf here you don't see any major spots that guy's got a tiny bit a little bit of a spot there that's signs of disease usually you need moisture for disease and probably not here is the best place to dig but uh, yeah this is right literally right beside a road but you can see the wheat is flowering right now so I guess I got a bit ahead of myself but this is Brandon wheat it's a Canada West breed this guy might not be yeah it's got ons uh, we have noticed like, some of these guys over here I'm thinking this is old Vesper wheat that's kind of gotten into the mix because it's on less but we like we like the ond stuff so the ons are these little hairs that are on top versus an on less has no no beard it's kind of the Bart Simpson wheat but you can see it's flowering just that's all you can see when it's flowering is just a few little specks this Brandon wheat has been it's carried a lot of weight for us in the last several years it's been a really good variety for us so dad sprayed this probably six hours ago five hours ago probably shouldn't be walking in it it is fungicide but it's still chemical so now like I said I'm it's I'm not even out in the good stuff yet this is actually looks really really good I'm going down a not really what you would call a tram line this is a tramp line t-r-a-m-p but let's look at I know that hill always gets a little light but let's look at what we got going on in here so typically what we're looking at right there you're kind of day zero right there right here you're looking at day plus one you know kind of you're back to day zero there this guy would be day negative one because it's still inside the boot maybe even negative two that's a tiller so you kind of got to go based on the main stems but you can see this more i shouldn't say you can see but this morning let's see if i can f most of them were looking like that just past the flag leaf that's not all that big of a flag leaf but that's also not a, a main so that's about what they looked like this morning this guy right here and this is what they look like now they've elongated over the last day or two you know there were some that were already headed out but so they elongate they and flower and one of the and then they get pollinated so as it stands right now there's no wheat in there because it's not sterile it's just not fertilized yet once it's fertilized it'll start filling and one of the reasons we like isn't that pretty just the way it gets blown in the wind there one of the reasons we like this on wheat is that it seems to make it harder for the midge to get in because uh, it's only open for a little bit and then it closes and there's a lot more stuff in the way it seems to thrash a bit easier yeah so as this stuff elongates it might get another this is actually what they call a semi-dwarf wheat Just taking a seat in a sprayer track. That's nice wheat.
if it can get filled out and it doesn't get hailed on and it doesn't get chewed up by grasshoppers and then it doesn't get rained on in September which happened in 2019 over and over and over yeah there's a lot of ifs it's a long way despite you know some of the bins just being uh, just on the other side of those trees this wheat is still a long way from the bin and even longer way from the elevator but we're look this is a semi dwarf variety so it's not going to get a whole lot taller than this maybe a couple inches but it it tends to be about three feet as the max so with let's take a look with my boots i think my i wear like 34 inseam pants i don't want to show you a picture of my crotch i don't think anybody really wants to see that too badly but yeah it's essentially almost up to my belt buckle in places which would put it right around the 36 inch mark you know there's some shorter stuff but it's looking really healthy i'm not trying to gloat It's looking really healthy. Uh, Fusarium is a fungus that gets in the head and it, it just, it shrimp, it makes the wheat grow crappy and you get really, oh you son of a bitch. Look at that. Can you see that? Getting too close. Why is that? I can't see shit. I'm a fucking grasshopper.